Assalamu alaikum my name is Fatma Masood and I have my group member Aisha Azam and our presentation topic is financial crisis management and lesson learned from Pakistan's economic history financial crisis a situation when assets drop sharply in value businesses and consumers struggles to pay their debts and liquidity dries up a financial crisis is often associated with a panic or a bank run during which investors sell off assets or withdraw money from saving accounts because they fear that the value of those assets will drop if they remain in a financial institution so there are some causes number 1 is a crisis can occur if institution or assets are overvalued and can be exacerbated by irrational or hurt like investor behavior number second is a financial crisis include systematic failures unanticipated or uncontrollable human behavior incentives to take too much risk regulatory absence or failures or contagions that amount to a virus like spread of problems from one institution or country so let's talk about the definition of financial crisis management effective financial crisis management is an important skill every business owner should possess financial crises include economic recessions debt crises currency crises banking crises and so on possessing this important skill will help you stabilize your finance and further prevent economic crises now there are two example number 1 is 1973 opec oil crisis number 2nd is covid 19 pandemic first example is 1973 opec oil crisis opec member started an oil embargo in october 1973 targeting countries that backed israel in the yom kippur war By the end of the embargo a barrel of oil stood at dollar 12 up from dollar 3 given that modern economies depend on oil the higher prices or uncertainly led to the stock market crash of 1973 to 1974 when a bear market persisted from January 1973 to December 1974 and Dow Jones Industrial Average lost about 45% of its value. The second example is COVID-19 pandemic. A global stock market crash began in February 2020. From February 20 until March 23, the S&P 500 lost over 30% of its value. This was a result of the COVID-19 pandemic which caused widespread panic and uncertainty about the future of the global economy. Despite being severe and with global reach, markets and nation economies rebounded quickly and the early April 2020, the S&P 500 had began a decisive rise surpassing its pre-pandemic high in August 2020. Now there are some strategies Number 1 is communicate effectively. This will help to build trust and prevent unnecessary rumors from spreading. Number 2 is banking sector stabilization. This aids financial stability, preserves access to essential financial services and fosters economic growth. Number 3 is contingency planning. You can determine the potential impact of each financial risk on the financial health of your organization. Number 4 this fiscal policy response they could also strengthen a social safety nets to support those most affected by the crisis including now Aisha Azam will further tell you about our topic thank you assalam alaikum i am aisha azam and i'll tell you about the pakistan's economic crisis and lessons learned from pakistan's economic crisis so firstly agar hum pakistan ke economic crisis ki baat kare to hum ye definitely keh sakte hain ki pakistan is facing one of its worst economic crisis right now agar hum causes of crisis ki taraf dekhe to sabse pehle hamare paas aati hai external debt pakistan ke current economic crisis ki main wajah hai pakistan ki external debt which amounts to around 126.3 billion dollar the country owes this debt to wide range of creditors including multilateral organizations paris club nations private and commercial lenders and china Pakistan ki foreign exchange reserves are currently around 4 billion dollar which are not enough to pay for even 1 month's worth of its import as a result hum ye keh sakte hain ki there is a significant chance that the nation will not be able to pay its debt in full second we have inflation pakistan is currently facing a decline in the purchasing power of its population and an increase in poverty due to a record breaking inflation rate of over 25% government ne jo expansionary fiscal or monetary policies implement ki thi to boost the economy in the face of covid 19 pandemic in policies ne in is inflationary pressure ko aur kharab kar diya 
Third, we have energy crisis. The country's GDP has decreased by up to 4% recently as a result of energy shortages. Pakistan heavily relies on petroleum and oil imports, which are very expensive and are prone to price volatility. Unfortunately, poor management, corruption, and lack of investment are the reason why Pakistan has insufficient and inefficient domestic energy production. है. As a result, there are a lot of load shedding and power outages in Pakistan, which negatively affect millions of homes and businesses. Fourth, we have political instability. Pakistan's financial stability. Stability is very important for Pakistan's political instability. Se. Political instability including terrorism and civil unrest disrupt economic activities, deter foreign investment and damage infrastructure, collectively contributing to economic and financial instability in Pakistan. Now, if we talk consequences of crisis, ki baat kare, toh, pehle, paas aata hai social unrest. Due to economic hardships, the Pakistani people have experienced there is a great deal of unhappiness and frustration which has taken many different forms including protests, strikes, riots and violence. Second, we have security challenges. The country is currently dealing with resurgence of terrorism perpetrated by various militant groups, posing a significant threat to Pakistan's stability and security. Third, regional implications. Pakistan, a nuclear armed nation with a population of more than 200 million, is very significant from a geopolitical standpoint. The potential collapse or instability of Pakistan's economy would have significant repercussions for its neighbors and the global community. If we strategies, then first of all, we have debt relief. Pakistan may think about asking for debt relief from its creditors to lessen payback pressure. Second, structural reforms. To lower inflation, the budget deficit and the national debt, the government should implement responsible fiscal and monetary policies. Third, political dialogue. The government and opposition should engage in a peaceful and productive dialogue to end their confrontation and work together to address the economic challenges. Fourth, international collaboration. By enlisting the aid of its allies and the partners, including China, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Iran and the US, Pakistan can improve its international collaboration. This may result in financial support, business opportunities, easier e-commerce and technological breakthrough. At last, if we have lessons learned from Pakistan economic history, ki baat kare, to sabse pehle hai importance of fiscal discipline. Pakistan his economic history shows that fiscal irresponsibility leads to economic crisis. Second, diversification of economy. Over-reliance on few industries makes the economy vulnerable to external shocks. Third, foreign debt management. Excessive borrowing and poor debt management lead to economic crisis. Fourth, economic reforms. Delaying reforms can worsen economic crisis while timely implications can mitigate their impact. Fifth, Political stability. Political instability hinders effective economic decision make, making and crisis management. Domestic resource mobilization. Relying on domestic resource rather than foreign aid can enhance economic resilience. Seventh, international support. Engaging with international organizations like the IMF can provide crucial support during economic crisis. Eighth, transparency and accountability. Ensuring transparency and accountability in economic decision making can prevent corruption and mismanagement. These lessons can inform effective financial crisis management strategies in Pakistan and other developing countries. Hope you like this video. Thank you.